I love this song by Nathaniel Bassi, uh, Adonai. And uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, thank you so much for tuning in for those who are listening to us far and wide and also uh, all those who are home in home ground that is PE or anywhere else in South Africa this is the God and me session uh, with none other than our very own Pastor Max Kuni who is joining me live in studio and he is seated opposite of me for those who are uh, actually tuning in onto our Amen. Facebook platform you can see he is seated opposite of me Praise so the Lord. guys it is is absolutely epic and Glory. i'm so excited because i know it's you know it's, it's about to drop you know as they say <laughs> the word of god <laughs> that's what i mean you know praise god absolutely Hallelujah. it's wow. great to see you this morning again sir awesome so what an honor and what a privilege it is to be joining you once again mm. in the studio this morning i'm thoroughly excited this morning mm. uh, for what god is about to do greetings mm. to all our viewers on our Facebook platform on all our social media platforms mm. as well as those listening via the radio app what a beautiful privilege and honor it is to be coming into your home coming into your car wherever you may find yourself and by uh, just communing and fellowshipping around the the word of God um what a blessing Indeed, it is to uh, end off uh, the week on this note. Uh, for those who might not be too clear upon the matter, today is the last day of the week. It's the weekend. <laughs> Tomorrow is the first day of the week. So, so we are ending it. All's well that ends well. Mm -hmm. hey, and uh, I believe that God always saves the best for last. And when I refer to the best, I'm referring to His best mm -hmm. for uh, so, so I'm extremely and uh, excited and uh, just blessed and honored for this opportunity to be to be sitting across the men of God here and share uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this is what we call the God and Me Time Show. It's a sh show where we just uh, chill and unwind and relax. On the last day of the week, on Saturday, uh, on the uh, biblical Sabbath, which is the seventh day, uh, where we just set aside some time and we uh, just uh, get into the Word. I want to encourage you to grab your Bible and your pen and paper, uh, a cup of coffee would be nice, a glass of juice, whatever you might be having. I've got some family all the way in, in, in a place called Tabachuanha in uh, uh, Pretoria and uh, so they often send me pics of how they set out the, the breakfast table and how they've got the phone there in the middle of the table and they follow us and go out and meet them while they're having their breakfast and uh, when I spent some time there uh, last year I was so blessed that um, I, I was on my way to go somewhere but um, we grabbed breakfast quickly and when I got to the breakfast table everything was set out there and there was the phone on the table and here my younger sister Rita was sitting on God and me time and I was like wow these people are really following us religiously you know because because they they, they gain some sort of value out of this program so we just thankful for the opportunity to be used um, by the hand of God to make an impact in people's lives and to just be a blessing to people overall. So, so without any further ado, if you would uh, open for us with a word of prayer, uh, that would be much appreciated. So, awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome. Let's uh, bow our heads and pray. Father, yes, we thank Lord. you for this beautiful morning, yes, beautiful Father. Saturday morning. It is good, O oh God Almighty. Mm. You created us, O oh God, yes, to Father. live in your will, to yes, do Lord. all that pleases you, Father. We thank yes, you for Father. this incredible opportunity once again, mm. even Hallelujah. to meet Pastor Max Kuni. It is a blessing, mm. O oh God Almighty. Thank you, thank you for all our listeners and those who are thank going you, to Father. hear this message, whether it's one month from now, whether yes, it's Lord. five years from now, O oh yes, God Almighty, Father. all those that are going to 
will be blessed. Father, I pray that you use this message yes, to Lord. transform many, many lives for the sake of the yes, kingdom. Father. Father, we thank you for our listeners. We pray for a blessing upon them, In protect the them. Jesus, and I pray Jesus, that you, uh, you know, continue to use Pastor Mark oh, you, uh, Father, for Father. as long as he continues to thank do you, your Lord. will here Jesus. on earth. Yes, Father, Father, we bless your name and we give you praise. In Jesus, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen indeed. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Thank you, sir, uh, so much for that um, powerful prayer. I would like to uh, go with us, if you would, if you've got your, your Bible or your device uh, at hand. I would love to direct your attention uh, to the uh, gospel um, of... Uh, Matthew. Um, I think it is Matthew chapter 6. Um, and uh, we are just going to, to, to touch on a couple of verses there. Um, I'm reading from the, from the New International Version. Um, Matthew chapter 6. Um, and then I'm, I'm reading from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6. As from verse 9, Matthew chapter 6, as from verse 9, uh, it reads as follows. Uh, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And um, that's verse 9 to verse 13. Um, what I would like to share with us from this particular scripture is that, first of all, we, we, we find um, a very interesting pattern in the scripture and I'm just comparing two uh, versions here but first of all we find um, doctrine mm -hmm. in a prayer mm -hmm. the the origin of doctrine systems of belief mm -hmm. as it relates to the uh, Christian religion and the Christian religion is basically even not even a religion it is a uh, it is a relationship with God because the Garden of Eden was where God communed with his people and he, then relationship was broken um, fellowship was broken between uh, God and man and between man and man and then the first crime uh, came from, from there when when people unplugged from the connection to God so so when your divine relationship is as is in disarray, then there will always be all sorts of negative off offshoots between people. So, so Christianity is actually at its core, um, or in its purest form, it is a relationship um, as opposed to a religion. But now um, it's very interesting that um, the reason why I'm mentioning, mentioning doctrines is there are certain doctrines or systems of belief that are, that are generic across the uh, church, big C church, body of Christ. There is a, a confession of faith. And the, the confession of faith includes, first of all, theology. Theology is the study of God. So when we confess our faith, we first start off by, by, by confessing, I believe in God, the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who came to die and take away the sin of the world. I believe in the Holy Spirit. So, so we, we basically um, uh, uh, confess our, our creed, uh, our, 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 that is our uh, uh, way of uh, living and how we relate to one another. And, and, and what I find very interesting in this particular portion of scripture uh, first of all I want to I want to just isolate three things the, the 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 prayer starts by addressing God as father 
our father and that was the revolutionary back then because they 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 saw god as object of worship they never ever uh, saw themselves as being able to get that close to god as to address god as father as as it's in the in the original text it's abba um, which is which we would know as daddy you know so they so jesus said when you pray pray and say daddy in heaven you know and 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 they they didn't understand that but but the beautiful thing is when you say when you pray out and you address the father our father and you say give us this day uh, our daily bread that is a a constant reminder first of all that god the father is the source of all good things and i want to i want to i want to really emphasize john james chapter 1 and verse 12 the bible says all good things even verse 17 i think it's verse 17 james chapter 1 verse 17 it says all good things all good gifts yeah uh, they they come down from the father of lights with whom there is no turning and no shadow of turning and no change so 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 the father is 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 immutable In theology there's a the word immutable that means it's totally impossible for him to change he, he is beyond uh, fluctuation and beyond variation there is no change in him that is the first thing we see god the father in this prayer you actually address god as father here and then we also find that the that that god the son is also um specifically addressed in this prayer because uh, if uh, it was not for his sacrifice we would still all be under condemnation we would still all be alienated from from everything that god wanted to bestow upon us through the blood of the lamb so when we pray in this very same prayer forgive us our trespasses we are affirming that the blood of jesus paved the way for us you know to enter uh, into the 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 place where our works disqualified us from you know so so when we refer to hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 and 20 it, it says there that jesus christ entered once into the most holy place so that he can once and for all do atonement for the sins not the blood of bulls and rams and goats and cattle that had to be sprinkled every single year but to cover the sins but he his blood never covered our sins his blood took away our sins John 1:29 uh, behold the son, the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world so so just by praying the our father prayer you are affirming uh, the belief systems and the doctrines uh, the dogmas of of the christian faith uh, this uh, relationship with god is being cemented just by you praying the sprayer and then i find um, also uh, the third person or uh, the third manifestation of god i i believe that there's one god deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, and verse 4 and 5 shema yeah israel the lord your god is one there's no other god before him and after him so there's not three gods there's not nine gods there's one god but this god is uh, revealing himself in different dispensations in different ways he revealed himself as father god the father in creation he revealed himself as god the son emmanuel god with us uh, the bible says he would be called emmanuel in uh, in the book of isaiah uh, chapter 9 uh, and also matthew chapter 1 he would be called emmanuel and the meaning of emmanuel is god with us if he was not god it would have said uh, 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 an angel with us or someone else from heaven with us but emmanuel means god with us so he's god the father in creation elohim uh, uh, and he's is Emmanuel God the son uh, with us and is also God the holy spirit uh, God created us god with us and is also the holy spirit god in us you know he indwells us through the holy spirit and when you pray the our father prayer you are affirming these things and 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 the beautiful thing about the things of god sometimes you can affirm something uh, unknowingly without even knowing because the the petition that we have here 
to God, that we pray to God, lead us not into temptation. That means that we, we, we are actually being reminded that God is leading us through the Holy Spirit. We are reminded that we are required to surrender to God um, so that God can teach us and lead us in all truth and righteousness. You would remember that um, the book of John, the book of John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus said, I will pray my father and he will send you another comforter uh, in my place. Now, the original Greek word there, when he said another in my place is the word alos, A-double-L-O-S. And that word A-double-L-O-S, alos means another one who is identically the same <laughs> so so jesus was actually saying that, that 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 the father has sent me and when i leave this uh, earthly body on the cross and it gets buried and i get resurrected uh, bodily resurrection and i am transported back to heaven i will come back to you again in another form <laughs> and then what happened basically the one the body let's let and to, to, to simplify it, the body of Jesus went to heaven and the body of Christ came to earth. That is what happened during the resurrection and the ascension. So the body of Jesus went to heaven and then the body of Christ came back. Because when he came back, uh, um, the pillar of fire, same pillar of fire who led them to the promised land, uh, came up in the upper room and appeared there. And that pillar of fire split itself up. So now the Bible says in Exodus 13, verse 20 and 21, it says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and by night in a pillar of fire. So who was in the pillar of fire? God was in there. So God is that fire. Then God came in Acts chapter 2. He broke himself up in that pillar of fire into 120 pieces and he indwelt 120 disciples. The reason was that uh, the reason why there were 120 was that you could only have a legitimate prayer meeting under the Jewish uh, system if you have 10 representatives from each one of the tribes, each one of the 12 tribes. So there were 10 from each of the 12. So there were 120 there and God broke himself up uh, into 120 pieces and God sat on them. He fell on them. He filled them and he flowed through them. So what happened in that upper room was that that, 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 that God told them, I'm not leading you to the promised land by the Holy Spirit. You have now become the promised land. They, you, are, you are being indwelled by my fire because there's a promise in you. And, 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 and when you pray this prayer, you immediately notice, hey, there in this prayer, there's God the Father, our Father. Uh, and also when you say, uh, give us this day, uh, the, the, the source, that is, that, that is our Father. Or when you say, um, uh, forgive us our trespasses, you you are you are affirming uh, Hebrews chapter ten that uh, by his uh, sacrifice we have forgiveness of sins. And when you say this, uh, uh, Lord, lead us not into temptation. You are affirming that God does indeed lead us by His Holy Spirit. So according to John chapter sixteen, so there we have the uh, affirmation of the the doctrine. Uh, of of God when uh, we have the doctrine of God that is theology but uh, the beautiful thing that I want to focus on shortly yeah, is that uh, there are certain things that we can notice in this in this uh, uh, prayer that, that 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 are really they really touching me in a way second to none um, first of all the the prayer itself the prayer itself. When you read here, the Bible says Jesus told, told his disciples, this is how you should pray. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. This is how you should pray. Do you realize that the Our Father prayer is the only prayer that is used on earth that originated in heaven? It is used on earth, but it originated in heaven. Because it came with Jesus from heaven. It was not man-made. It was not part of a man-made tradition or a man-made response to God. Um, it was not even part of a man-made uh, belief system, dogma, or a man-made lethargy uh, on earth. It is something that originated from heaven do you know um, following on from here do you know that when you pray 
the our father prayer and 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 and, and uh, we are going to dispute the, the 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 title or the name of this prayer in a minute the the popular name you know <laughs> but when you pray this prayer you are actually saying that i am here mm. on earth mm. but everything that i need mm. uh, is coming from above mm. Um, when you pray, you are actually um, breathing out more of yourself mm. and breathing in more of God. Mm. And as you pray, Jesus said, this is how mm. you should pray. Mm. So, so there are a couple of things that we need to be mindful of when we pray. Uh, the first thing is Jesus taught his disciples how they should pray. How do you pray? First thing, our Father who art in heaven. That is, you are addressing the greatest person. That's the first point. You are addressing our Father in heaven. So, so if you have the proper perspective uh, uh, and you see things from God's perspective, your life will have a totally different trajectory because you will not look and say, hey, I'm surrounded by circumstances. No, 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 no. You will look down and say, from God's perspective, all things will work together for the good of those who love the Lord, those who are the called according to his purpose. So in other words, when, when, when you say, our father it is like a little boy looking up to his dad and to every little boy irrespective and regardless of how short his father is to every little boy his father is a giant my father is a giant Hey, glory be to God. My father is the king of kings the lord of lords the creator of heaven and earth my father is the is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. My father is Elohim, El Shaddai. My father uh, is the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty. Uh, he is the only God. Uh, and uh, beside him, there's no other God. My circumstances don't need to listen to me, but they have no choice but to listen to my father. Uh, when you are a little boy, I remember when I was a little boy and some of my siblings were little boys. Whenever we got into trouble in the street or on our way to the shop or on our way home, we rush to get home and then we run. We give our back to whoever is pursuing us and we would run home. But the moment you get home and your father speaks on your behalf, you do not give your back to your enemy anymore. You turn to your enemy and you become strong and you start accusing your enemy because you know the giant is here. Glory be to God. Uh, we need to understand that COVID is not bigger than our giant. COVID is a giant, yes, indeed, but we have a bigger giant. We need to understand that uh, the, the, the economy of the world that is going through a recession might represent a financial giant, but we have a bigger giant who says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the cattle on a thousand hills, the gold and the silver of the world belongs to him. We have a greater giant than any other giant. Uh, I read and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase because I don't completely remember every element of the story, but it's a simple story that I read some time ago somewhere. And the story says that there were three boys bra uh, bragging, trying to, 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 to uh, convince one another that whose father is the richest and whose father makes the most money. And so... The first one said, my father, he just writes uh, uh, one piece of paper and they place it uh, in, a, in a newspaper uh, or in a magazine and he gets a lot of money for one piece of paper. And the next one said, my father is so rich. Uh, he, he writes one piece of paper and it becomes a song uh, and they pay him a lot of money for that. And the third one said, my father is richer than all of you. He writes one piece of paper. He calls it a sermon and they make five collections. <laughs> you know? So, so, so these boys were bragging on their fathers. This morning I'm bragging on my father. Hallelujah. 
He is the great I am. He is who he says that he is. He is I am. Uh, he is the great one. Uh, in creation. Now we have uh, uh, the greatest person, our Father. He is being addressed in this prayer. Uh, and uh, we also need to understand that uh, uh, there is no Father, true Father, uh, with a true Father's heart, who would ever reject His Son. Do you know? Regardless of and irrespective of no matter how far you have fallen, no matter what you've done wrong, your father will always be your father. I want to encourage somebody to come back to your father this morning. Um, the, the, the Bible from the beginning of the end uh, to the end speaks of a father who's looking for his lost children. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 and 9. Mankind, where are you? Uh, Jesus uh, coming uh, in the New Testament. Come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Uh, Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son, the father was waiting for him with all open arms. I want to encourage you that, 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 that people may reject you. People may disregard you. People may disqualify you. Do not join them. Uh, but tell yourself as the prodigal son did in Luke 15 and verse 20, I will rise up and I will go to my father <laughs> because our father is waiting for us. So, so, so the fact that we have a father speaks about um, this beautiful relationship that we have. And then we also have the greatest position the bible says our father who art in heaven this other other version says our father who is in heaven uh, so 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 when we look at our lives we must understand that our lives can never be controlled by anything on earth. <laughs> our lives are controlled by our Father who is in heaven. I want to encourage somebody that God is still in control. You might have lost a job. You might have lost some assets. You might have lost uh, some people you held near and dear to your heart. But let me encourage you that God is still in charge. He is still on the throne. He has not ever abdicated his throne he has not run away to Dubai to hide away somewhere uh, from COVID our God is in control the politicians and the businessmen they run away to Dubai our God never runs away to Dubai he is on the throne and he will remain there he says I am the beginning and I am the end and at the end and in the scriptures, there is a white throne judgment. Uh, he is on a white throne right to the very end. For the believers, that would be the Bema seat judgment where we get rewarded, not judged. Uh, but uh, uh, for those who do not accept him, that is judgment uh, that will determine the ultimate uh, eternal position uh, of uh, separation from God. But I want to emphasize that when the Bible ends, God is still on the throne. <laughs> He's nowhere else. He's on the throne. Glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I am excited, bragging on my God. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. When we approach Him in this prayer, our Father who art in heaven, we observe protocol. We need to understand that that, that, that that royal protocol says you can never enter the court of a king without a gift. Now, 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 our king is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He um, doesn't require us to come and to enrich him. No, his presence enriches us. But still we do observe uh, a, a royal protocol by, by, by calling him uh, our father who art in heaven. And we say, hallowed be thy name. That means we say we, we, we honor, we respect, we reverence, your, we keep your name holy, we, 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 give your, we give your name all the glory and all the honor. So, 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 so it is impossible to pray this prayer. Listen closely. We have relegated this prayer in our ignorance. Uh, we have Try to teach our children to pray. Yes, and we start with this one, uh, and and they, but 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 when you look 
at this. The Bible says the disciples, grown men in their 30s, 40s and 50s, asked him, teach us how to pray. And he said, this is the way you must pray. So this is, uh, I said we're going to dispute the title of this. It's not the, the, it's not the Lord's Prayer. It's not the, 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 the Our Father. It's actually the disciples' prayer. Because, because the Lord's Prayer is in John 17, where Jesus prayed for his disciples. <laughs> Uh, intercessory prayer, the high priestly prayer on behalf of his disciples. But this one is the one that is given to us to pray. So if you pray this one, you must say, hallowed be your name. When you are saying hallowed be your name, you are telling, you are actually telling God, Lord, I'm living in such a way that when people look at me, they can see from my lifestyle that I am respecting you. When people observe the fruits of my mouth and my actions, they actually observe observe that I, I acknowledge you as a higher power in my life. I do not do my own thing. I do whatever I do and I keep in my mind that I need to keep your name holy. That speaks to the need for repentance. <laughs> we need to come to the point where we realize that we are representatives of God in the earth and we need to go back to God and get right with God because if you love in a way that doesn't help Hello, who is name? That means you will always be prone to corruption and crime. You will always be prone to, to, to practices that are unsavory. You will always be prone uh, to living a life uh, uh, that is hypocritical. But, but, but if you tell yourself, today I must make his name holy, people must look at me and say, I respect his name. You, you will not be perfect, but you will come to a point where you make sure that every step is taken to honor God. I, I, I don't know if you've ever served um, a listener or viewer in the, in the armed forces or in the or in the police, uh, or in law enforcement, uh, or, or let's make it more general, we've all been to school, uh, primary school and most of us secondary school and most of us further. But, but one of the things that they tell you, when you, when you wear that school uniform, they tell you, you must not fight in this school uniform in the street. <laughs> They tell you, you must not smoke in this school uniform in the street. You must not swear because the people will look at the uniform and they will not know the name Mark and they will not know the name John, but they will know the color of the uniform belongs to that school. And they will say, the children of that school are ill-disciplined and it's only two naughty ones out of 200 but still they will label the name of the school that is what hallowed be thy name means it means you are living in such a way that you are bringing honor to God you don't want people to speak bad about God because of your behavior uh, the, 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 the most a dangerous thing that we could ever do is to think that that that, that we represent ourselves. No, 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 no. You represent Christ. Um, um, there's something good that some of the mainstream churches have done. The most, uh, the mainline, the traditional churches, they've introduced uniform. And you know what? Hey, our brothers in the mainstream church, we are from the from the charismatic, Pentecostal, prophetic, and apostolic background. But yeah, 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 yeah. Those guys. You know, when they put on that uniform, <laughs> yo, 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 that brother becomes an angel. You know, you, 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 when he puts on that uniform, and I'm not doing it to criticize, I, I, I'm learning from them. When I see them do that, I learn something great from them. If he puts on that blue jacket, or that red jacket, or that black, there's, something takes a hold of him. He gets a posture. He starts to chest out. He doesn't walk like this normally. He's got a regal royal stride. He's got a way even of greeting. He, 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 he behaves in line with the requirements and the demands of the uniform and the badge he, that he is representing. When you say, hallowed be thy name, you are saying, I will behave in such a way that people see you are clothed with Christ. You are representing the Lord Jesus Christ. This prayer speaks about uh, living in such a way that God gets glory 
from your life god doesn't get glory from 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 uh, uh, negative things that people do uh, behind closed doors <laughs> God doesn't get glory from gender-based violence. Uh, you cannot say amen, hallelujah in church and then you go home and you swear at your family and your children and you become this monster at home. Uh -uh. When you say hallowed be thy name, you are actually saying, I will make sure that when people look at me, they will say, wow, there is a God. Look at that changed life, you know. So that is the greatest pr protocol. There's also a great pri priority. In this prayer, okay. you know, because in this prayer, when you say thy kingdom come, mm. you, 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 you are actually saying I am going to strive towards and submit to God's heart for my life. It's not about building my condom, my kingdom. This, the, the, you see, the order is very, very significant here because the prayer doesn't say, or the, or the prayer doesn't start. When I read here, it doesn't begin with petitioning, but it starts with a signal of intent for God's rule to be implemented on oh, earth. Hallelujah. You know, so, 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 so most of the time when we pray, mm. our prayers is, uh, and, and, and with all due respect, um, um, this is a general thing. It's not directed at anybody in specific, mm. but you would find that most people's prayers resemble a shopping list. Mm. <laughs> Seriously, sir, it's a, it's a, it's a wish list. You know, when you do online shopping and you put the things there and you, you click on those things, then they fall under a list that's called a wish list. Those are the things you want. And you cannot come into the presence of God. Oh God, I want this. God do this. God, ah, ah, ah. Mm. You, you, you must follow these steps. Mm. Our Father, mm. is your relationship right with your Father? Mm. That's the first thing. Who art in heaven? Mm. Yeah, hey, you are above everything. Mm. Hallowed be your name. I am respecting you and keeping your name holy. Mm. Then your kingdom come. You see, before you even asking for bread, mm. before you even asking for money, before you even asking for health, mm. you are asking for His kingdom. Oh. So, so the the. The, 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 the priorities are also outlined in this prayer that God wants us to prioritize His rule Hallelujah. on earth. Hallelujah. But you cannot prioritize His rule on earth if you are not ruled by God yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you cannot be like these political commentators <laughs> who say this and that should have been done. Uh, uh, you cannot be like these uh, uh, parties in power and uh, official oppositions who say this and that should have been done, but they do not even, they cannot even do it themselves. God wants us to allow Him to regulate our own lives. And, and you know what, sir? If God can control my life mm. if god can control your life mm. if god has the permission to control that person's life and that person and that do you know what mm. society is going to be a beautiful mm. place That's because it starts with the individual if god's kingdom can mm. come in your mind mm. and in your heart oh, and yeah. the will of god can be done in you and through you oh my mm. goodness uh, what a beautiful place mm. we would have we would have no way mm. that the devil can infiltrate mm. and make an impact mm. on our lives mm. so it's very important for us to understand that uh, the, uh, this prayer speaks of priority mm. the kingdom of god mm. you know what the bible says when it speaks about the kingdom of god mm. it says seek ye First, the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. So, so, so the law of priority comes in, in this prayer that we need to seek God and his rule and his kingdom first. And if we can do that, uh, there's an old song we, 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 we sang in the Pentecostal churches growing up. My Jesus is, my Jesus is the number one. No matter what the others say, my Jesus is the number one. But then you would find the very same people who sang my Jesus is the number one after church and when they get home and even in the transport home, whoa, 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 whoa. you would find there, there's this story and that rumor and that gossip and that they just came from singing Jesus is number one. And now they themselves want to be number one. Now their feelings must be number one. Now their, their rumors and stories and gossips must be number one. This prayer says God is number one in our lives. As we continue. 
to this prayer. Uh, uh, uh. Then we also find that there is a great partnership mm. in this prayer, sir. Mm. The reason why there's a great partnership, this prayer says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you say that God's will must be done on earth, that shows that you are actually saying, I will partner with God. Because God is not going to come down from heaven to love John. He says to me, Mark, you must love John. God is not going to come down from heaven to preach the gospel to a world that is lost. He tells me, Mark, go out and make disciples. So, so when you say your will be done, you are actually volunteering to saying that I will be a conduit. Word, I will be a channel, I will be an instrument that will ensure that God's will on earth will be done. Because God is already, and, and, and I know God is omnipotent, is omniscient, I know He is omnipresent, I know He's all powerful everywhere, He can do anything and everything. But God says His hands are full. He says, I'm making sure my will happens in heaven. You must make sure my will happens on earth. Let your will be done on earth as it, as it is done in heaven. Who is making sure it's done in heaven? It's not me. It's God. He is making sure his will is done in heaven. We must now make sure his will is done on earth. And the painful thing about the will of God, the will of God starts with the death of man. Why do I say this? The will of God requires you to die. Uh, not to be deceased. Not to be buried uh, six foot in the ground. No, 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 no. But your ego, your self aggrandizement, your uh, fullness uh, of yourself within yourself must die. You must say, uh, not my will, your will be done. And it's very difficult. So easy to read it, so easy to say it, but to do it in practice, <laughs> it requires faith. <laughs> uh, and the disciples prayed, Lord, increase our faith. And I must always pray that every now and then, oh, Lord, increase. You want me to do this? Lord, the person, hey, the, not even long ago, sir, the person I know, I know that I know, and God also knows. This is the person who has been trying to manipulate situations. Uh, this is a person who has been trying to dig holes for me to fall in. This is the person who has been trying to assassinate my character. You, you know what God says to me? Go to the shop and buy some food for those people. Yo. Take your money and buy and do some shopping and give to those people. It's not easy. But uh, by the grace of God, I was able to do it, you know. So, 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 so when you say your will be done on earth, you are actually saying, I want to do your will. When Jesus came to Peter, he said to Peter, Peter. Uh, uh, have you caught anything? Mm. Peter said, mm -mm, I'm washing my nets now. I'm leaving. Mm. I'm coming back tonight. I'm going to go home to sleep mm. because that's how the fishermen's uh, routine was. Mm. They would go out at night and, mm. and work and then they would mm. take a nap during the day mm. and then they would go back mm. uh, uh, during the night again. So now he was washing and mending the nets, preparing for the night shift. Mm. Jesus says to him, uh, uh, cast out your nets. Mm. For a catch. He said, ah, ah, Lord. He was honest. He said, ah, ah, Lord. I've worked very hard the whole night. And also in that area, you, you would find that the fish would not come out during daytime because of the sunlight, excuse me, the sunlight that would shine. It would, it would actually be too, too harsh for their eyes. So they would hide deep down amongst the rocks in the darker areas. So they, the, the time when the fish really came out to swim was when it was nighttime, you know, then they were really around. So, so, so Peter knew. As an experienced fisherman, I, I'm wasting my time if I'm if I'm trying to catch now during the day. And I said, "Now, Lord, I've, I I worked the whole night. I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> I know it's not gonna work. It's a waste of my time." But then something significant happened. He said, "But Lord, on Your word, at Thy word, on Your instruction, not my will, Your will." And when he did that. 
a miracle occurred. Mm. I want to tell somebody out there, out there in Facebook land, out there in, 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 in social media land that's watching us. It might not be easy for you to allow yourself to die to yourself mm. and go and humble yourself before that person who has wronged you. Mm. But let me tell you, your victory lays in that. If you can do that, if you can go and humble yourself, if you can forgive that person, if you can uh, uh, make contact and if you can really live uh, uh, with that person uh, uh, in a state of peace, mm. do you know that your miracle is contingent upon that. Your miracle will happen because of that. Because when Peter said, okay, fine, all my knowledge, all my experience, all my expertise as a, as a commercial fisherman, uh, as a businessman for years, I will set that aside because of your word. If we are able to set aside our own emotions and our own feelings and our own reactions because of his word, Miracles will transpire. Miracles will happen. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that business deals will come through flowing, flowing because the blockage will be removed. I prophesy that people will walk in health, in healing, not just physically, but emotional, mental health. People will walk in victory because the blockage that has, that has prevented them from living in the favor of God has been removed yes. let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven your will Lord not my will yes. when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane it was one of the worst moments of his life he, he prayed so intensely that the, 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 the sweat on his brow mm. fell like blood to the ground and it, is, it has been scientifically proven that it is indeed possible uh, at a certain point uh, uh, of intensity at a certain point of stress uh, and at a certain point uh, of uh, unbelievable pressure that you go through that it does indeed happen uh, that, that, that some of the blood uh, veins or some of the blood vessels uh, would burst uh, around your forehead and you would actually really sweat blood uh, so, so Jesus was at the worst most difficult moment but in that moment he found it within himself to say father if it is your will let this cup pass from me let me not go through this but yet not my will be done your will be done and you know what the will of God brought him to a place where the apostle Paul articulated it so beautifully in Philippians chapter 2 he says and Jesus Christ he did not owe it robbery to be equal to God and to let go of that he didn't hang on to that and grasp onto that and cling on to that but he set aside his throne and his royal robe and he became obedient being formed being found in the form as a man he became equal to man he became a servant he laid aside his royal robes he became a servant and the Bible says and that is why God has highly exalted him he became obedient even unto the death of the cross that's why God has highly exalted him and given him the name above each and every other name so that in the name of Jesus every name shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father, when he became obedient, God has highly exalted him. I want to encourage you, not your will, not your emotions, not your way. Go with the will of God. Go with the plan of God. That will be your greatest ever breakthrough that you will ever experience. The will of God, the plan of God, the purposes of of God. We find in the same prayer, sir, as we are moving to the end, the same prayer we find the greatest pardon where we pray and we say, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. Now, uh, there is a catch in this forgiveness. The catch is Mark is praying, Lord, I know I did wrong. Please forgive me. But there is something that Mark uh, uh, feels that John has wronged him. 
and he does not want to forgive John. He is so childish that he wants to be forgiven, but he does not want to give forgiveness. The greatest pardon says forgiveness can only be received if it is first given. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgave. Forgive. Look at the tenses. Forgive us in this version at least of the Bible. It says, forgive us as we forgave. Think about it. Forgive us as we forgave. So that means uh, God is under no obligation to forgive you if you have not forgiven so we all want and we all need and we all desire forgiveness. But, but forgiveness in the same vein just as love. Mm. Love cannot be received only. Mm. It must be given. Then you can receive it. In the same way, forgiveness, mm. it cannot just be received. Mm. You must give it away. Mm. Um, 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 money in the world, mm. uh, if you want more of it, you must accumulate it. Mm. But love, if you want more of it, give it away. You're going to get more of it back. <laughs> Forgiveness, give it away. You're going to get more of it back. So, 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 so this prayer is teaching us how to behave. You understand? Because, because sometimes we don't know how to behave. <laughs> sometimes we do not really want to know how to behave. <laughs> we are so full of ourselves that we want all the good things for ourselves. Do you know we want grace and mercy? Grace is when you get something that you didn't deserve. Mercy is when you don't get a punishment that you did deserve. We want grace and mercy, but we are so lazy to give it away. God here is telling us that if you want it, you must give it away. You must, you must be able to forgive others. Otherwise, God cannot forgive you. James chapter 5 or 16 says, um, 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 confess your faults to one another um, and pray for one another. The fact that it says confess your faults, that means and then pray. If you confess your faults and fight, it's not going to work. If you confess your faults and walk away angry, it's not going to work. If you confess your faults and pray for one another, forgive one another, then it's going to work. You will be healed, he says. If you do that, so 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 allow me to 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 to, to tell you that 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 your your even your healing, mm. physically, mentally, emotionally, is contingent upon your willingness to forgive. If you do not forgive, resentment and bitterness can give you cancer. It's not the KFC that you ate that gave you cancer. It is not the, 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 the energy drink you drank that gave you cancer. It is the unforgiveness that you harbored in your spirit. The Bible says it is in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 19, it says it is like a, it is like a rotting in your bones if you do not, if you do not have peace with your brother. So, so if you harbor old and you carry old burdens, it's the year 2022, but you have not been speaking to someone because of something that happened. Before the year 2000, then you want God to heal you. It's not going to work. You are going to remain sick with all the love in the world, really. I'm not being cruel and angry. I'm telling, I'm telling you that you want to be healthy, but you keep on drinking poison. How, how are you going to be healthy? You keep on drinking poison, but you want to be healthy. You, you are doing something that's counterproductive. You are shooting yourself in the foot. You are killing yourself. So the Lord says, let go. Let go of it. Oh, yeah. If they have did you wrong, it's fine. Mm. Don't, uh, don't stay there in mm. the past. Mm. Move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell God, God, I, I want to let go, but it's difficult to let go. But please give me the strength to let go. He will help you uh, to let go oh. and to forgive. Mm. The Bible says uh, the next thing is, uh, and, I'm, and I'm coming very close to ending. I'm just going to end mention one or two more things. Mm. It says the greatest path is also given to us in this prayer. It says here in the prayer, one of the petitions, lead us not mm. into temptation. Mm. So, 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 so if you think about it, there's a saying that says the road to hell is, is paved with good intentions. When you lead yourself, you can really find yourself in a, in a hell of a situation, you know. But, 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 but if you follow the greatest path, if you follow 
you know, you, you can in, encounter so much calamity, distress and hardship because you want to do things your own way. Mm. When this prayer says, lead us not into temptation, mm. it means that you are submitting to God's direction for your life. Mm. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, your word is the light for my path and uh, it is the lamp for my feet. Um, so in other words, I will, I will allow God to lead me. It's very difficult to really allow God to lead you because the moment you want to allow God to lead you, the devil comes and tells you it's your life. It's your decision. Your most dangerous thing ever. Your life. Your decision. How did life get into you? Was it not God that allowed you to live when all the other babies died? Was it not God that allowed you to get out of the ICU? Was it not God that kept you in the incubator? Was it not God that took you out of that situation. Oh, but man. now the devil wants to come and, and fill you with sinful pride mm. and tell you it's your life. Mm. There's no such thing that it's mm. your life. It's mm. God's life I that we are stewarding. Mm. If God allows my life now, my the breath of life to leave my body, mm. then the people who love me so much, they're going to come and they're going to say, we must put this body in the ground. Mm. You cannot leave him in the house. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause stench and illness and sickness. So, 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 so God... God has got the rights mm. to our life. Mm. So God wants us to follow mm. his way. Mm. The Bible says mm. that, 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 that when um, David prayed, mm. he said, Lord, show me your ways. Mm. He wanted the path. Mm. Um, I think it's Psalms 32 and verse 5 or Psalms 32 and Psalms 25, excuse me, and verse 8. Mm. says, you will teach me the path of life. Mm. You will show me the path of life. Mm. We also have in this prayer mm. a declaration mm. of the greatest protection. Mm. In this prayer, we have a petition, deliver us from evil. When you say that, mm. uh, you are actually saying, Lord, mm. release the divine bodyguards mm. from heaven, oh, the I angels, the divine security yes. detail, release them to cover me, mm. to cover my entrance and my exit. Oh, you, are, you are appealing to God for his protection. Mm. And then as we close this prayer, the final words in this prayer says, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Mm. Yours is the glory forever and ever. Mm. Amen. Once again, mm. God is the beginning and the end. Mm. Uh, there's Amen. nobody like him. Oh, <laughs> glory be to God. Hallelujah. Everything originates from the Father mm. and it ends with the Father. Mm. First Corinthians 15, I think verse uh, uh, 24 says that, even at the end, Jesus Christ will hand over the kingdom and the dominion and the rule to the Father. Mm. It all began with the Father mm. and it will end with the Father. Mm. So now when it says yours is the kingdom mm. and yours is the power and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm. The kingdom is God's rule. The power is when God uh, rules and reigns in us and it flows through us. The glory is when people see God's work in our lives and they testify um, to what God has done. Uh, I think uh, one writer, um, uh, in, 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 it was the Apostle Paul of, uh, in, 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 in Ephesians 3 and 20. He says, uh, uh, for our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever think for, hope for, pray, pray about. And then he says, and to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Or to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. That is affirmation that God is the beginning and the end. And then this prayer ends with the word, Amen. It ends, the, uh, the, the disciples' prayer ends with the word Amen. And I just want to look at um, something as it ends in the word Amen. When you say Amen, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm so, uh, I was so uh, entertained. Okay. Yeah, let me say entertained <laughs> once. <Okay. laughs> because, because, because. I was I was at a graduation ceremony 
and I was asked to be a speaker okay. at this graduation ceremony. And at the ceremony, there was a speaker, a, a keynote speaker. He was a preacher, mm. and he employed a, a verbal anchor. Mm. Verbal anchor is when you say the same thing over and over again when you don't know what to say. Mm. For example, if you speak and every time you am, um, um, uh, and you did um, uh, and you say John did it um, 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 in Afrikaans, there's a, a word that, that they love to use. Uh, dinguses, dinguses. Yeah, it's in English, it's English. Uh, in, in English, it's what's the name? What's the name? Yeah, it's yeah. like they don't know the the, uh, the what's the name. Mm. I put the what's the name here. Where's the what's the name? You know, like it's a verbal anchor. So this preacher, he was speaking, and his verbal anchor was the word Amen, yeah. and so <laughs> and so it was a colored preacher, and 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 and, and the the the, the Dean of that university is a is a is a is a is a, is a white gentleman, mm. a white South African gentleman, mm. and uh, so when this preacher spoke and said, uh, um, "This morning we are here to celebrate Amen," and then whenever he would say Amen, then I would notice that the professor would get up as if he he wanted to stand and then he would sit down because the preacher would continue and say because these candidates did very very well and we are here to give God praise for what they have accomplished amen and when he said amen the professor would want to get and so I noticed the pattern okay every time he says amen mm. the professor wants to then when we had a, a, a meeting uh, and the meeting, uh, it's like a post-mortem mm. to discuss the yeah, yeah. the strengths and the weaknesses and the, of the graduation ceremony. Mm. And so the professor said there, um, where I come from, when you say amen, it's done. It's finished. It means it's over. He said, and this guy keeps on saying it's over. And then I want to stand because it's over. And then he continues. And then he said to me, Mark, the next time you, you, you must, you must uh, 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 deliver that address. And please, when you say amen, let it be over. <laughs> and, 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 and to him, it meant, it meant full stop. Amen meant full stop. You know? But amen doesn't really mean full stop. Mm. Amen is a is a confirmation mm. uh, where you say that uh, this is now sealed, mm. and this is uh, this will uh, definitely happen mm. in this way. It mm. is it, it is literally let it be, mm. or so might it be. Mm. It is literally meaning that 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 that, that, that so it is confirmed, or so it is established, mm. or, or or so it is it is it it, it is bound to happen. You know, mm. so that is the, the the meaning of amen. So so when you say amen after mm. this prayer. Mm. You are actually saying, our father, yes, he is my personal father. Mm -hmm. Who art in heaven, yes, mm -hmm. uh, I look to heaven for my provision. Mm -hmm. Hallowed be thy name, yes, amen. I live in such a way that his name gets glory through my life. Uh, thy kingdom come, yes, amen. I live in such a way that I promote his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. I, I make sure that I implement his kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. um, um, and in every single sentence that we have gone through, when you say amen, mm -hmm. you are saying you are ticking the box and saying, yes, right, yes, right, green tick, yes, green tick, yes, green tick on all of them, you know. So, so, so when this prayer ends with the word, amen, um, what it is actually saying is that you are actually telling God, I'm in agreement with everything that has just gone before, everything that we have prayed for. So. I want to ask you, wherever you are, check yourself. Start with your relationship with God. Check if that is really an amen. Start with your 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 um uh, uh, your commitment. Is that really an amen? Your commitment to the kingdom of God. Uh, start with uh, the will of God. Is the will of God really happening in your life? Is that an amen as well? And so go through each and everything that we've discussed. Go through that entire prayer. Um, uh, 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 deliver us from evil. Is that an amen? Or do you have your own personal gun that you think is going to deliver you from evil? Or do you go somewhere at night, you drive far to get some talismans and to get some... Uh, 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 artifacts to carry under your elbow mm -hmm. or under your under your uh, armpit mm -hmm. to, to to protect you mm -hmm. or, 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 or do you really do you really have an amen mm -hmm. 
on mm. each one of mm. the things that we have mm. gone through in mm. this prayer because this prayer is actually an evangelism tool mm. if you listen to it clearly and if you know the the if you know the significance of and you have a little bit of insight in then you realize wow this prayer is leading me into a deeper relationship uh, with the lord jesus christ this prayer prayer is actually an altar call this prayer is bringing me to Jesus. So I want to encourage you um, in your homes, wherever you are, as you pray this prayer, as you read this, uh, take, 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 take a moment of introspection and check, am I indeed really an amen on all of these elements in this prayer? And as you do so, uh, my commitment to you is that the Lord will bless you and your life will never ever be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, sir. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, Praise wow. The Lord. Praise Jesus. Glory, Glory to God. Yes. Ladies hallelujah. and gents, as you have heard it, you know, right here, mm -hmm. that was Pastor Max Cooney uh, on the God and Meet. You know, time. Uh, we, I, we, I believe. You know what? You've been blessed. I believe you've had an incredible uh, deposit in your spirit. Hallelujah. You know, of the Word of God. You know, yes. the Word of God, which is able uh, to set free. You know, to yes. deliver. And I believe that. You know what? Uh, your life will never, ever never be, be the same. same again Hallelujah. so ladies and gents you know what uh we want to really highly encourage you, you know, pardon us for that pardon we want us. to encourage we you we want to check who's online <laughs> and, and say thank you to them <laughs> it is well it is well it is well you know i believe you have been encouraged and we want to ask you to Hallelujah. tune in every single saturday at Please. 10 a.m exactly uh, for an incredible word with pastor max scuni on the god and me time one thing that i take you know that's really really you know like a whole lot i i take a lot of from this you know and i know you have been blessed i take a whole lot one thing that really you know uh sticks out to me is when pastor max said you know what this life that we've been given all right it is god's life it is not our life Yes, then the whole prayer takes an a, a very, you know, um, it, yeah, that's basically the essence of the prayer. You know, yes, our Father who art in heaven, you know, uh, your kingdom come, your yes, will sir. be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, you know, it goes on and on. And he, you know, he has just done an incredible job of unfolding the truth. Uh, we want to really bless your day. So if you want to really uh, always just have a moment yes. with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Tune in to this incredible show mm. and your life will never be the never same, be the same again. again. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Mark. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us this Praise morning. The Lord. And uh, I believe our listeners and our viewers yes, are really eager you know, to hear you. Maybe just give them a last word of encouragement oh, yes, and uh, maybe a word of prayer. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, uh, apology for that, for that extra sound that came through. <laughs> it was when I went online to go and uh, thank those that have gone or that have signed in or that have followed us this morning. And now I'm pressing this volume down and it doesn't want to go and it's stuck on the screen. Hey. <laughs> maybe, maybe a new phone is on the way. Who yeah, knows? Is, eh? <laughs> Praise be to God. Uh, but I just want to acknowledge this morning uh, particularly Nette Hansa that is online who has, who has followed us uh, this entire program uh, and uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge each and everybody else who also who just also liked uh, and who um, just made a comment um, on this program that we had here um, this morning um, it, is, it is very uh, important for us to 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 realize that 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 our hope sir and this is in closing our hope is not from this world our hope is beyond this world that means there's nothing in this world that can be bigger than our hope in Christ mm. in God mm. it is it is it is basically like 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 saying you've got this mouse 
and this mouse is broken and you are working on this mouse or the technician is working on that mouse and the technician is saying, I, 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 I'm going to fix this mouse. This mouse doesn't have a will of its own because the technician is greater than the mouse and the technician has knowledge of the mouse. So when we pray to God, we are going to someone who says, I made all of this. It has to bow to me. It, it's got no choice but to obey me. Um, 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 there's nothing here that can overrule me. Uh, even if we sometimes feel that we are overruled or we are being uh, oppressed or suppressed due to situations and circumstances, we must always have this point of reference. Our God is greater than all of this, you know, our God is greater than 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 all the uh, uh, empires mm. combined from the beginning mm. of the world right up until the end of the world. Um, our God is greater because the Bible says when 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 um, Daniel um, revealed to the king the dream that he had of the statue mm. uh, of gold and silver and bronze and iron and clay uh, that was the empires of man mm. from the beginning to the end. And then David. Um, um, Daniel said something significant uh, uh, about Daniel 2 verse 45. He says, and in those days, mm. the king of heaven. Mm. You know what? The king of heaven. There's nobody else that can call themselves the king of heaven. <laughs> they call themselves a king of this piece of land, a king of that piece of territory, a king of that domain. But he says in those days, the king of heaven will set up a kingdom. Uh, he will take a stone that was not uh, 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 touched by the hands of man without the, 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 the hands of man touching that stone will become, uh, will smash the, the, the statue or the feet of the statue and that stone will become a mountain he says and so uh, the mountain will fill the entire earth and so the kingdom will fill the entire earth so our God is comfortably in control so I want to encourage you whether you find yourself in hospital whether you find yourself in debt whether you find yourself uh, in whatever situation in some family issues whether you find yourself contending with with uh, the aftermath of COVID things that have gone wrong that you couldn't foresee let me tell you that our father is above it all mm. and he foresees everything mm. and he has made a way uh, uh, when you look at uh, uh, the word provision mm. our uh, uh, the, 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 this prayer is all about God's provision provision of forgiveness provision of wisdom provision of uh, 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 a second chance all of those things are there but when you look at the word provision the word pro means before or forward vision is sight so God foresaw everything Thing. God sees you. Uh, 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 there is uh, something beautiful that we have um, noticed once. Uh, we went to um, Sankob. There's a there's a sanctuary at Sankob at the uh, on the beachfront at Summer Strand, mm -hmm. a, a a penguin rescue mm -hmm. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think a year ago or so, yeah, when we were. Uh, taking some time out on holiday, we took the family and the kids there. And the, the, the facilitator, one of the conservationists there, told us that this is where the penguins lay their eggs. But then what they do is they, they lay their eggs together. It's very close to one another. It's like almost on top of one another. And they all sit there next to one another to, to hatch out the eggs, to keep it warm. But then sometimes one egg would roll away. Now, to our eyes, those eggs all look the same, exactly the same. But then you would find a mother coming there um, from wherever she was coming back. And then you would see looking around, looking. There's a lot of eggs there. That woman, that, that, that one penguin, female penguin would go <laughs> and find that particular egg somewhere that rolled away. Out of all the eggs that looks the same, that penguin knows this egg is mine and bring it back and hatch it out. Now think about it. If a penguin knows her egg out from among other eggs that look the same, how much more does God know you out from all the 8 billion people on this planet? How much more does God know you? You are in safe hands. Uh, you are in safe, the care of God. And God is about to do something great. 
in your life. Father God, I thank you this morning for our listeners who have tuned in. Father, those that have followed us on Facebook, those that have listened over the radio app, those that have signed in or followed in, Father, even from other countries, I give you all the yes. glory for them, Lord. Father God, I thank you that this morning we had an exposition, Father, of this prayer that we so often overlook and that we so often, Father God, undervalue and undermine, but I thank you that this morning there was, there was knowledge, wisdom and understanding, there was insight uh, drawn, from this prayer I pray that these things would uh, uh, would rest upon our lives and that our lives would be impacted by these things I pray Father God that our lives would never be the same ever again after this morning uh, I pray Father God that 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 everything in this prayer that our lives would resemble that uh, uh, that uh, first of all a relationship with the Father second of all uh, uh, hallowing his name uh, thirdly of all uh, uh, prioritizing his kingdom. Uh, uh, fourthly of all, Father God, uh, asking him uh, to forgive us as we forgive those uh, who have also wronged us. And then fifthly of all, provision, Father, in all our daily needs, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that we will allow the Holy Spirit, starting from today, to lead us uh, in all truth and all righteousness. Uh, Father, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that as this prayer ends with the word Amen, that our lives would also say Amen to this prayer, that our lives would be in a agreement with this prayer that our lives this prayer would be seen it would be expressed it would find expression and articulation in our daily operations i give you all the glory and praise father those that do not know you father as their personal lord and savior this prayer says our father i know you are their father i know that your heart for them is to save them because you came to save and to seek the lost i pray father god that you would reach them wherever they are and that the holy spirit would work on their hearts lead them father god into a place where you can speak to them and where you can speak life into their lives father father those that are suffering father god with all manners of sicknesses and illnesses and diseases father god father i know that healing is the children's bread father god according to your word so father when this prayer says give us today our daily bread i know that healing is included father god father god in the name of jesus that person that is out there that is struggling with an issue uh, father god on the right side of their of their body on the right side of their neck father god from the head into the shoulder that feels a pain there and, and a lameness that i come against it now in the name of jesus and i speak life and life more abundantly in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ uh, father god i come against uh, uh, that lameness uh, father god and that uh, inflammation on the right side of somebody's body in their hip right now in the name of Jesus I pray that you would touch them and heal them in the mighty name of Jesus that person that has been struggling with migraines uh, intermittent coming now and then uh, in the name of Jesus I cover them under the precious blood of the lamb father God by your stripes they have been healed father I give you all the glory and praise for what you are doing father that person that's listening to us who has given up all hope father Father God, Father God, restore, Father God, the joy of their salvation. Bring them back, Lord, into that intimate fellowship with you and restore their relationship, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I will never neglect to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Much thanksgiving for what you are doing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we pray here, Father God, I also pray for this radio station, this platform. Father, I pray, Father God, God, for the visionary year, the man of God, John, Father God, everybody in leadership and management, everybody, Father God, that has got anything to do with this radio station, presenters, Father God, administrators, in the name of Jesus, bless them, Lord, Father God, and let your light shine upon their ways, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would decree an open heaven above them, Father God, and that you would always provide all their needs according to your riches in glory. I give you praise and honor and much thanksgiving in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Wow. Amen indeed. Uh, as Pastor Mark said, when we say amen, we come to an agreement with yes. what the Lord has done and said. We say, so be it. Ladies and gents, thank you for tuning in. 
and uh, yeah. we are going to see each other next week. Stay tuned because at exactly 1 p.m. today we had we have Sianda Vazi of Obomi Foundation coming yeah. in right here. It's gonna be live. It's gonna be epic. Yeah. Tune in. It's anyway. gonna be awesome. Let's end this session with a song called "Beginning and the wow. End." God bless awesome. you. Yeah.